taking our country forward and making a better life for all our whānau out there. Thank you, Mr Speaker. The Honourable Jackie Dean. Mr Speaker, thank you. It is very telling when members of the government spend uh, a large part of their contributions in the general debate talking about national. Thank you very much um, to the member who just resumed his seat. And when they are not uh, referring and making nasty personal attacks on colleagues, they are delivering platitudes about hard-working New Zealanders. Well, that's all very fine and good, but there is some real damage being done to this country by this current government, and we are beginning to see the extent of the damage that is being done. We now are getting a picture of what this government is like. The tensions between the three warring factions are beginning to come out in the way of policy. And I will give you an example. Order, order, that example order. came to light yesterday in the government's policy statement on land transport. And so uh, earlier in the debate, we had the Honourable Julianne Genta absolutely glowing about the wonderful, marvellous, marvellous 21st century traffic solution. What does that really mean? What does that really mean? That means trams for Auckland. What that really means is $5 billion of expenditure that would have gone into the regions being pulled in favour of trams and light rail for Auckland. Tell me, that, tell me how that is good for the regions. New Zealand First must be spitting with rage because here we have the Green Party over this side of the House, for those members who follow Parliament, who are talking about a completely Auckland central funding mechanism. Imagine stealing $5 billion out of the region and standing up and being happy about it. And then on this side of the House, we have New Zealand First and Honourable Shane Jones with his Regional Investment Fund, which they say is doing everything for the regions. Where is the compatibility between those two policies? Why are they stealing $5 billion in favour of Auckland, and then they have Shane Jones uh, trying to run a very strong campaign for his hometown in Northland with his regional development fund. There is a lack of coherency in this government policy. The trouble is it would be almost amusing if it weren't having a real effect on New Zealanders in the region. So I had a, I had a chat to a relative of mine who lives uh, down south in my electorate, in fact, um, this relative of mine, lady, lives on an invalid's benefit, has done all her life, because when, uh, all her adult life, because she has got cerebral palsy. So my relative um, budgets very, very carefully, down to the last dollar, as she puts the rest of us to shame. She budgets $7 per week for fuel. She needs that fuel so she can go to the doctor, so she can go to the supermarket, so she can go to the swimming pool to do exercise, so she can go into town and do her jobs. She is not unlike many, many, many New Zealanders on low fixed income. So, $7 a week per fuel. Uh, a quick reckoning uh, means that an extra 10 cents per litre fuel tax on this lady adds $3 to her weekly fuel bill, bringing it to $10 a week. Now, $3 might not seem like much to some members in this House, but for those New Zealanders who budget very, very carefully down to the last dollar, actually $100-odd dollars a year is a significant dent in their budget, which they cannot spend on other things. And that is before the fact that every other thing that that lady and every other New Zealander in the regions has to, has to, co has to factor in the cost of food, the cost of every other commodity because of the fuel tax going on top. They don't get any benefit out of it because this is a transport policy for Auckland. Do not tell us that this is a transport policy that is in any way going to benefit rural and provincial New Zealand, because it is not. It is going to drive cost 
for ordinary New Zealanders throughout New Zealand, never mind Aucklanders who are going to be paying up to 27 cents extra per litre of fuel. This is a poor, poor policy. Mr Speaker. Liz Craig. Thank you, Mr Speaker. It's an absolute privilege to speak.